The polio epidemic of the early 1900s was the largest outbreak of polio in history. No cure was known, and the conventional treatment compromised the recovery of the patients. In 1940, Australian nurse Elizabeth Kenny treated polio patients in Minneapolis, Minnesota, using physical therapy and rehabilitation techniques. Her method challenged the conventional treatment of polio at the time, creating conflict between her and the doctors. Eventually, the medical establishment compromised their beliefs and incorporated this more effective treatment, allowing her method to become regarded as the best way to treat polio until a vaccine was distributed in 1955. Polio rose to epidemic levels in 1884 and only continued to grow. In 1916, there were 27,000 cases in the United States alone, and in 1952, at the epidemic's peak, 57,628 cases were observed. It was not a new disease, but the ideal of cleanliness rising across the world allowed for fewer people to either develop or inherit an immunity from unclean surroundings. The symptoms of the disease were the same as symptoms for the flu, making polio difficult to diagnose until it approached the acute stage. I mean, it was like a, a, a phantom enemy, this illness, and I was scared to death as a young mother. In the 1910s, Boston surgeons developed theories that polio should be treated through rest and straightening of paralyzed limbs, believing that improper use of muscles would cause further deformities. Patients were placed in isolation wards and put in splints and casts, that held the affected muscles still, effectively killing the muscle tissue and compromising the patient's recovery. Even though only 20 to 40 percent of patients fully recovered after being immobilized, medical professionals thought immobilization the best option and were suspicious of claimed success from other methods. Elizabeth Kenny began her life of medical work as a bush nurse in Australia, a nurse with no formal job who travels to remote areas to treat people living there. In 1911, she encountered her first polio patient. She was told by a doctor friend of hers that there was no known treatment and that she must do the best you can with the symptoms presenting themselves. Kenny observed the patient and determined that heat should be used to ease what she perceived to be clenched muscles. The patient soon recovered. Four years later, Kenny enlisted as an army nurse during World War I, earning the title of Sister, a rank of the Australian Army Nursing Service equivalent to that of a lieutenant. After returning from the war, Sister Kenny found herself treating the increasing number of polio patients in Townsville, Queensland, with an improved version of the treatment she had used with her first patient. Her method focused on using rehabilitation exercises as soon as possible so that the patient's limbs would not become paralyzed from inactivity. She believed that the patient's muscles were not paralyzed, but rather limp from neighboring muscles that were spasming. This belief directly conflicted with the conventional view of the proper treatment for polio. The orthodox treatment was to keep people immobile, um, but she took away all the braces and then really combated the muscle spasms that people had, which was her term, uh, because of the polio with hot packs. So we know that heat, um, you know, relaxes muscles. In the 1930s, Kenny captured national attention for her polio treatment. In an attempt to achieve government recognition, Kenny demonstrated her method at Brisbane General Hospital. Because of her lack of knowledge about medical terminology, and the unwillingness of the doctors to accept a radically new treatment. The demonstration was disastrous and led to conflict with many Australian doctors who strongly believed in the orthodox treatment. A Brisbane physician present echoed the thoughts of many, calling Kenny a seemingly ignorant, uncouth bush nurse. Despite this, the nurse was able to open several government clinics with help of an ally and continue treating polio patients. In 1936, a negative, crucial report came to the Queensland Royal Commission about her clinics, calling her method a grievous error fraught with great danger. By 1939, any news of success in Kenny's treatment was buried by news of World War II. 
helping to spread her method to travel to the United States of America, a country not yet affected by the war. In 1940, Sister Elizabeth Kenny traveled to the United States of America to present her effective treatment method to the American medical establishment. She had decided to present her method at the headquarters of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis in New York, also known as the NFIP, at the American Medical Association in Chicago, and at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, a site recommended to her by a colleague. Kenny once again encountered conflict when presenting her ideas in New York and Chicago, both because her theories challenged the conventional knowledge of polio and because she was a woman with no formal medical training. After lecturing at the Mayo Clinic, she was sent to Minneapolis so that physicians could observe her work more closely, agreeing to a 10-year investigation of her method in various places worldwide to decide its validity. Sister Kenny was granted a ward at Minneapolis General Hospital, where she successfully treated acute polio patients. After studies showed the efficacy of her treatment, the once hostile NFIP compromised their beliefs and agreed to fund her work. In 1942, the Sister Kenny Institute was established in the city to provide a larger facility for Kenny to practice her method. The opening of the institute granted her a great amount of national support. By 1947, her treatment methods were widely accepted as the best way to treat polio. However, many places in the United States still did not believe her theory that muscle spasms caused paralysis in polio. Eventually, her method gained recognition from the prestigious medical journal The Lancet, as well as the American Medical Association, and spread across the world. Elizabeth Kenny's treatment method for polio helped 90% of her patients recover mobility in their limbs, compared to 20 to 40% of patients who were treated using the orthodox treatment. But uh, have you had any real difficulty, actually, as a result of the, uh, the polio? Well, I wouldn't say so. You feel that you have made a, a very good recovery? I certainly do. In 1951, the Sister Kenny Institute was regarded as the foremost among all hospitals devoted exclusively to the treatment of patients suffering from poliomyelitis. With the invention of the Salk vaccine for polio distributed in 1955, which eradicated the disease in many countries, the need for Kenny's polio treatment was over. However, Sister Kenny's principle of increased mobility and re-education of muscles in the treatment of polio helped increase the use of physical therapy in other crippling diseases such as orthopedic injuries and deformities, as well as stroke and other chronic illnesses. Before she came along, the traditional treatment of polio was to keep people immobilized and put them in braces. And Sister Kenny's method was all about getting them out of the braces and getting them moving. And that's how we still really is our philosophy in physical therapy today. Elizabeth Kenny died in 1952, but the Sister Kenny Institute continued functioning as an effective polio treatment center specializing in Kenny's method of using physical therapy. In the years after the Salk vaccine for polio, the Sister Kenny Institute expanded to involve all kinds of rehabilitation medicine. In 1961, the United States Office of Vocational Rehabilitation chose the Sister Kenny Institute as one of its first two centers for rehabilitation research and training. Today, the recently renamed Courage Kenny Institute continues to be a large center for rehabilitation services. In 2016, the Institute served 92,000 people and helped 82% of stroke patients return home. This legacy emerged from the conflict Sister Elizabeth Kenny faced during the times of polio, when the established medical establishment compromised their beliefs and adopted Sister Kenny's revolutionary method. <laughs>